Yo, red button means we're live. Some casual takes with your boy Steven Pepper here to get some takes off my chest. Sorry for missing yesterday. I took my last exam, uh, but I'm moving out today. So this will be the last day. If anyone who's watching, you know, fell in love with my backdrop. This is my off-campus house. I'm moving out. This is the last day of my junior year in college. So tomorrow or the next time I film, I will be at my house. But I do want to get some takes off before I move out. I literally move out in like two hours. So I, I want to get some takes off before I move out. Starting with the Timberwolves Nuggets game yesterday. Um, master class, jaw dropping. No glaze, but what we saw from Jokic last night was nothing but dominant. And I know Jokic doesn't care about awards. He only cares about his horses or whatever. But on the night that he received his third MVP trophy from Adam Silver, he showed the world why he's deserving. 40, 13, and 7 on 68% shooting. And get this, zero turnovers last night. My takeaway was, I don't think you, you I don't think it's possible that you can stop him. Like, what's the game plan here for Nikola Jokic? He scores at the he scores at will at the rim. He has the greatest touch ever. And if you want to double team him to stop the scoring, then he's just going to kick out and find the wide open man. He's Shaq scoring meets Magic's passing. It's unreal. And what's crazy about Jokic's performance is that Minnesota has the best personnel out of any team in the league to slow him down, and they can't with their size. Like, I'm old enough to remember uh, just last week, the Wolves were crowned as one of the best defenses, one of the best defenses ever. And Jokic saw them and was like, yeah, yeah, that's cap. Every time Jokic sold defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, he looked at him and said, you're Blue Buffalo, straight Dog food. Jokic shot eight for nine with Gobert as a primary defender. Like That's insane. Rudy Gobert is like a four-time defensive player of the year winner, and he shot eight for nine against him. And, of course, Draymond Green on inside the NBA on the post game. Um, everyone on social media, you know, no one really likes Rudy Gobert. Everyone was roasting Gobert, saying he's a fraudulent depoy. He's not good at defense. He's cooked. He's a liability after the game. But I'm going to defend Rudy Gobert for a second. It's not like he played bad defense. Like, if you were to outside, like, a couple possessions where Jokic was just insane, Jokic just made tough shot after tough shot. Hakeem Olajuwon, Tim Duncan, footwork. Like, Jokic is just that good. He makes a defensive player of the year, his defense, be unreliable. Like, to put in perspective, Anthony Davis, who's always a defensive player of the year candidate, couldn't guard him. Bam Adebayo, who's always a defensive player of the year in the finals, couldn't guard him. I think he put 30 on Wimby this year. Like, Gobert, like, outside of the Jokic possessions, was blocking shots at the rim, was pass deflections. He looked good yesterday. It was just against Jokic. No one can guard Jokic. That's the newsflash. No one can guard Jokic. You know, I thought the deciding moment of the game was the Nuggets' third quarter run. Uh, the Nuggets were about up six at halftime because they went on a run to end the second quarter. Then out the gates, Minnesota tried to flip the switch, take a 3-2 lead, and they went on a run of their own to start the third quarter. And then the Nuggets went on their third quarter run. Jokic was kind of like, Ant Towns, that's kind of cute, but it's, it's over now. And I, I said earlier, the Nuggets were like, the, they remind me a lot like the Warriors were like, they just have these third quarter runs where they come out of halftime and they just end the game there. They always end the game in the third quarter like the Curry KD Warriors. Jokic had 16 points in the third quarter. There was a stretch where in a two-minute run, Jokic had four assists. He didn't, I don't think he scored in two minutes, but he had four assists. He just creates advantage opportunities. But he also scored 16 points. Like, what's the game plan here if you're trying to guard Nikola Jokic? Everything that he did last night was perfect. I, I thought that was one of the best games I've seen in recent years from a basketball player. And again, literally last week, how many people were on social media or on your favorite talk shows claiming the Timberwolves to be the next favorite in the West? They had the, one of the best defenses they've ever seen in the playoffs. And Nikola Jokic just cooked them. Even the Timberwolves at their best cannot hold Jokic to a bad game because Jokic's bad game, game two, is still 16 for 16.16 6, 16 rebounds. That's a bad Jokic game. 16.16 16 rebounds. Like, I feel bad for Gobert because he Jokic 8 for 9 on him. Gobert played good defense. Hands were on his face. But Jokic's touch around the rim with the floater, the fadeaway, the Shambor shuffle. Um, he had Kim Elijah on Tim Duncan footwork, the bank shots. He was hitting step-back threes. 
Jokic is just great. On the night he wins his third MVP, I know he cares about horses. He doesn't care about awards. But the night he wins his third MVP, he reminded everyone, there's no doubt why I won this. I'm the best player in the world. And now for Denver, the winner of Game 5, this is good news for them. After being down 0-2, the winner of Game 5, when a series is tied 2 apiece, wins the series 82% of the time. They go back to Minnesota, I believe, tomorrow. And I can't wait for that one. Nikola Jokic, man. Shaq scoring. I never got to see Shaquille O'Neal. I was a little too young to see prime Shaquille O'Neal. And I definitely wasn't alive to see Magic Johnson. But Shaq scoring meets Magic's passing. That's Nikola Jokic. Okay, before I get out of here, before I literally, like, when I say get out of here, like, get out of here, like, I'm moving out. I want to talk about my guy, Bronny James, for a second. I want to I show some love to my guy, Bronny James, because it's just weird how much hate he's getting on the internet. You know, Bronny James, the NBA draft combine's going on, and Bronny James continued his draft combine workouts in day two yesterday. He had a scrimmage, had a couple of buckets, looked pretty good, tested pretty well. And he had the main thing was he had uh, the interviews. He didn't really have interviews at USC, but he talked to the media a lot yesterday, said a lot of good things for Bronny. You can tell Bronny really wants this and wants to make a, a lane for himself, uh, not just being known as LeBron James's son. And, man, if you just go on Instagram, go on Twitter, and hit the comment section on any LeBron, Bronny James-related post, it's honestly disgusting, man. There's a whole lot of hate in there, bro. Like, you can tell what type of person someone is just by asking for their opinion on Bronny. Oh, Bronny sucks. Are you serious? Four points per game in college. He's not an NBA player. Yeah, you're a weirdo. Like, am I the only one who wouldn't be mad if a team drafted Bronny? Oh, he'd only get drafted because of his daddy. There it is, folks. Bronny hate is just straight up people projecting their hate for his dad onto him. It's sad, bro. Like, cut the kid a break. His underwhelming college career was due to his health scare. Largely due. I, he had the, he suffered a cardiac arrest in the last offseason. His underwhelming college career is largely attributed to that, in my opinion. And he even said it himself in the interviews. Now, realistically, I think Bronny should go back to school for one more year. But you can't deny the kid has potential. And if a stable organization would want to take a chance on him, you know, late first round, early second, I wouldn't be mad at all. Yes, the tests are in. Bronny is undersized. He he tested about 6'1 and a half with no shoes on, and he always listed as 6'4 on his other teams. But did you see the other combine stats, or is your blind or is your hate blinding you? He shot 19 for 25 in the three-point shooting star drill, which was second amongst all participants. He's a shooter. He also had the third highest vertical out of all the participants. He's athletic. You know, I don't think Bronny's a star. I'm not trying to say he's going to end up being a star, but he I truly believe he can be a useful athletic 3 and D player in this league. And athletic 3 and D guys, that's a real asset in 2024 NBA now. That's a real asset in 2024. That's a premium. Bronny said, you know, uh, one of his quotes I got right here, he was talking to the media and he said, like, players like Derek White, Drew Holiday, Davian Mitchell are NBA players he thinks affect winning in ways he wants to as a pro. And I saw some people clown that comment saying, oh, Bronny doesn't want to be a star. What's up with that? He should aim to be a star. You know, a lot of times aiming to be a star makes you a bust. That quickly puts you in the G League because you're not going to be a star. You know, but being an athletic 3 and D guy, Drew Holiday, Derek White, you would kill for those guys to be on your team. You would kill for an athletic. The Lakers last year would have killed to have an athletic 3 and D guy on the roster to step up half court to a Luka, to step up to a Steph Curry, to step up to a Trey Young and guard your team's best point guard. That's a premium in 2024 basketball when everyone can shoot, everyone can dribble, the spacing's insane, and everyone's scoring 130 points per game in the regular season. And this has nothing to do with the fact that he's Bron's son. You could say... Oh, uh, you know, oh, because he's only getting drafted because he's LeBron James' son. His name is Bro LeBron James Jr. I'm telling you right now, look at his combine numbers. He's athletic. He can shoot. He can has defensive potential. I do think he should go back to college for one more season and kind of write and kind of, you know, get more experience because he missed a lot of time last year. So he doesn't rush his NBA because I don't think 19-year-olds are necessarily ready to play in the NBA. 
But this has nothing to do with the fact that he's Bron's son. He has potential, and it's 3 and D, which is a valuable asset. And this is a draft that sucks. I can't name you who's going number one. You can't either. The lottery looks like a bunch of randoms and a bunch of eh, college guys. And especially in the NBA draft, the low first-round picks are so hit or miss. You can either get a star, which is very, very rare. Most of the time, it's either a good role player or it's a guy who's going to go straight to the G League and not be good. And in the, in the second-round picks are pretty much worthless in the NBA. Pretty much worthless. So why not spend a pick on Bronny, who can be an athletic 3 and D guy with potential, who doesn't have to play right away. He can go to the G League, get some shots up, shots that he missed at USC last year. Because let's face it, this is why we got to cut Bronny a break. You could harp on the fact that he was an inefficient four-point-per-game shooter last year at USC. But that cardiac arrest health scare, that definitely affected his college career because he missed a significant part of the summer. He missed, I believe, eight games of the regular season at USC. And then when he came back, I think he said in his interviews, his mindset was messed up. He wasn't the same player. His legs weren't the same. And also USC was terrible. So that's why his college experience wasn't so good. But we saw the combine, the athlete, the shooter that Bronny James can be. I think he should go back to school for another year. But if a team in the late first round, second round, wants to take a chance on him because he has potential, I'm not mad at it. I say go for it. But we have people online, people that I've talked to in person. You just ask them, hey, what's your opinion about Bronny James? Or you see a post on Bronny and go to the comment section and see people's opinions on Bronny James. You absolutely know what type of person that is. That is a weird person. And that person does not like LeBron. So he's going to project his hate of LeBron unknowing. He probably doesn't know it onto Bronny, onto his son. But I think Bronny is an absolute draftable player. And I think he tested well enough at the combine to be taken in the second round, late first round if a team wants to. But I appreciate everyone for tuning in to this episode of Some Casual Takes. Follow my social media. Some Casual Takes is the handle on all things related to the show. Until next time, I'll be in a new setup. I can't wait. Well, new setup as in the house that everyone knows. But until next time, see you.